Don't just aspire to make a living. Aspire to make a difference. There's a saying, when the devil ignores you, then you know you're doing something wrong. Wait a minute, I'm not done now. <laughs> you know, the, the devil goes, oh no, leave him alone. Man. He's my favorite. No, that was not planned. I knew nothing about it. Okay. Can, can I say it for real? Yeah. I was like, what the f is happening? For any newcomer trying to break into the entertainment world, landing a spot at the Academy Awards might seem like the ultimate dream come true. But now, it seems like industry veterans are warning that it could actually turn into a nightmare. And it's not just about winning the award itself, it's more about the things you might have to do to get there. These warnings aren't just coming from bitter individuals either. No, they're allegedly coming from some of the biggest names in Hollywood, like Denzel Washington. According to them, the reality of the industry isn't what it appears to be from the outside. These are people who've won all the top awards and rubbed elbows with the executives who run the show, and they're supposedly revealing that reaching the peak of the entertainment industry comes with a price that's almost as high as their lives. And if that doesn't sound bad enough already, it gets even worse. Apparently, those who try to break free from the industry's grip often face dire consequences. Now, it seems like more and more of these insiders are coming forward to share their stories of the dark side of Hollywood. So, if you thought you knew everything there was to know about Hollywood, think again. So what is happening in Hollywood? Nobody knows. The worst thing to call somebody is crazy, is dismissive. I don't understand this person. So they're crazy. From roles being imposed on actors to entire movements being orchestrated by the industry's top players, the darkness lurking behind the scenes in Hollywood seems never ending. What's different now is that these actors, who have long been compelled to comply, are finally fed up. Even though many of these actors have enjoyed the luxuries of the elite lifestyle, it's clear that the toll they've paid dealing with these executives can't be overlooked. Over the years, we've seen numerous instances of celebrities speaking out about what really goes on when the cameras stop rolling, only to be dismissed as crazy. But the truth is, it's not every day you learn that a select few might be pulling the strings behind everything in Hollywood. Yet that's starting to seem like exactly the case. This time, it's not just one celebrity who's telling the story of how they may have walked into their own doom by kissing the rings of the people up high in the food chain. It's a whole horde of them. And it starts with Denzel Washington, credited on some of the biggest movies of all time, as well as having a shelf full of awards to solidify his acting prowess. If there's anyone who's seen it all and knows exactly what's happening in Hollywood, it's Denzel Washington. Washington's first move wasn't to expose the big names directly. Oh no. The actor started out by firing shots at his fellows in the industry for what he described as their delusional arrogance. People say, oh, the difficulty of making a movie. I'm like, oh, send your son to Iraq. That's difficult. It's just a movie. It's like, relax. The actor, famous for being brave and smart, openly talked about the decreasing viewership of major Hollywood awards shows. He said that the shows focus too much on pushing their political opinions onto viewers. He said that we're in a new time when people are tired of the woke Hollywood elites who act like they're better than others. Washington himself said these people go on stage, congratulate themselves, and tell everyone else how to live. Meanwhile, they live in very expensive mansions. However, not all the most famous stars are affected by this problem. Take Take Denzel Washington, for example. He's a guy who knows what's important in life, and he's not exactly pleased about how some of his fellow entertainment industry people act, proving that this plague only affects some people. This is not to say the actor didn't deal with his own share of problems over the course of his career. Denzel, who has won an Oscar, doesn't just stop there. He doesn't believe that making movies is super hard. He even compared it to simpler jobs like being a garbage man or dealing with the challenges of war. I like being a garbage man better. Huh. But uh, they weren't bad jobs. It's like a, you know, people say, oh, the difficulty of making a movie. I'm like, oh, send your son to Iraq. That's difficult. Just like how Denzel made it his business to call out his peers and their delusions, other celebrities have also called out some of the odd things they have also seen play out in the industry. For context, 84 years have passed since Hattie McDaniel made history with her groundbreaking Oscar win, yet the echoes of her achievement still reverberate through the halls of the Academy Awards, where the representation of black women remains marred by a persistent 
constant lack of diversity and a troubling trend of typecasting. As the anticipation builds for the 96th Academy Awards, the spotlight once again falls on the Best Supporting Actress category, where Davine Joy Randolph stands poised to potentially join the ranks of McDaniel and other black actresses who have made their mark on Hollywood's most prestigious stage. However, beneath the surface of this apparent celebration lies a deeper narrative of systemic bias and limited opportunities for black women in the film industry. The prospect of Randolph's victory in The Holdovers is undoubtedly a testament to her talent and dedication, yet it also serves as a stark reminder of the narrow confines within which black actresses are often confined. From McDaniel's portrayal of Mammy in Gone with the Wind to Randolph's portrayal of Mary Lamb, the head cook at an elite New England boarding school, the Academy has a long history of rewarding black women for roles that reinforce stereotypes or serve as supporting characters to their white counterparts. This pattern of typecasting is not unique to the Oscars, but is reflective of broader societal attitudes and power structures that marginalize black voices and experiences. Despite strides towards greater diversity and inclusion in recent years, the film industry continues to grapple with systemic racism and a lack of representation behind and in front of the camera. The consequences of this inequality are felt not only in the limited opportunities available to black actresses, but also in the narratives that shape our collective understanding of race, identity, and power. To date, only 10 black actresses have ever won an Oscar, with Halle Berry standing as the sole black woman to have won in the lead category. The numbers are even more dire when considering non-acting categories, highlighting the pervasive of underrepresentation of black talent in Hollywood's highest echelons. While there have been notable exceptions such as Jennifer Hudson's portrayal in Dreamgirls or Viola Davis's performance in Fences, these instances are too few and far between to constitute meaningful progress toward true equality. The legacy of Hattie McDaniel looms large over the Academy Awards, serving as both a beacon of progress and a reminder of the work that remains to be done. McDaniel's historic win in 1940 paved the way for future generations of black actresses, yet it also set a precedent for the types of roles they would be expected to play. From maids and domestics to slaves and sidekicks, black women have long been relegated to the margins of Hollywood's imagination, their stories reduced to supporting roles in the narratives of white protagonists. The irony of this situation is not lost on those who have dedicated their lives to breaking down barriers and challenging stereotypes in the entertainment industry. From Lupita Nyong'o's portrayal of Patsy in 12 Years a Slave to Octavia Spencer's role in The Help, black actresses have repeatedly demonstrated demonstrated their ability to transcend the limitations imposed upon them by the industry. Another celebrity who has faced the shady side of the Oscars is Halle Berry. On the same night that Denzel Washington won Best Actor and Sidney Poitier accepted an honorary Oscar, Berry became the first black woman to win the Best Actress Oscar, and she remains the last. This moment is so much bigger than me, Halle Berry said through sobs during her 2002 Oscar acceptance speech. This moment is for Dorothy Dandridge, Lena Horne, Diahan Carroll. It's for the women that stand beside me, Jada Pinkett, Angela Bassett, Vivica Fox. And it's for every nameless and faceless woman of color that now has a chance because this door tonight has been opened. Barry understood the magnitude of her victory. So did Denzel Washington, who later began his best actor acceptance speech for training day with two birds in one night. Two birds in one night, huh? <laughs> oh, God is good. God is good. Going into the ceremony, Barry and her Monsters Ball producer, Lee Daniels, were certain she would lose. She had lost everything to Sissy Spacek for In the Bedroom, Daniels revealed. It was surreal. It was out of body. Barry also remembers it as a blur. But what she does know is that her speech came from my collective consciousness of what I had been feeling all along about the shoulders of the women that I stand on. Only a few moments into the speech, she says, did reality sink in. I remember having the thought of, oh, I'm actually up here. I think I won this thing. For her role in Monsters Ball, Barry, then 35, became the first woman of color to win the Best Actress Oscar. As of now, she is also the last. In addition to Washington's award, Barry's watershed win came the same night as an honorary Oscar for Sidney Poitier, who became the first black man to win a Best Actor Oscar in 1964. But much of the promise of that moment has failed to materialize. I'm heartbroken, Barry said about the continued lack of diversity among Best Actress winners. 
I would love to sit here today and say that meant something on that night, which allowed five others to be standing there next to me in 20 years, right? That would be a huge win. Eight years after Barry's triumph, Gabure Sidibe became the next black woman nominated for Best Actress, for Daniels' is Precious, while her co-star Monique won Best Supporting Actress. Kuvanjane Wallace, Ruth Nega, Cynthia Erivo, and Andra Day have since earned their own Lead Actress nominations. Viola Davis has two, plus a Supporting Actress win for Fences. Meanwhile, Washington's win was quickly followed by Jamie Foxx and Forrest Whitaker, and with Will Smith leading the Best Actor race this year, there could soon be five black men with lead acting Oscars, but likely still one woman. There is something to be said about the fact that Oscar voters seem to vote for black women when those women are experiencing pain or trauma and not when they are triumphant or experiencing joy or just having regular everyday experiences, says April Rain, a media strategist and diversity and inclusion advocate. I look at Gwyneth Paltrow in Shakespeare in Love. She was just a girl in love. We need to get to the point where we are all celebrated in that way. Rain has been paying close attention to the racial dynamics of the Academy since she founded the hashtag Oscar So White movement in 2015, when an all-white lineup of acting nominees prompted backlash and a major overhaul of the group's membership. Since then, there have been signs of progress, Moonlight's Best Picture triumph, Mahershala Ali's two supporting actor Oscar wins, a long overdue screenplay statue for Spike Lee. Just last year, Judas and the Black Messiah became the first Best Picture nominee with an all-black producing team. Daniels, a two-time nominee, still likens the awards to a skewed popularity contest. Who sets the tone for who's favorite at the party for the most part are white, male critics who don't understand my world, he says. Barry remembers thinking after her Oscar win, well, this is going to have to change my life now. Now I'm going to have to get more scripts and be taken more seriously. Reality was more complicated. I was disappointed when I realized it's not going to do any of that, she said. I won that award, and they didn't back up the script truck to my door because I won it. I became more famous, more people knew my name, and I think my industry respected me. But my quest to find roles for people who look like me did not become easier. Rain, too, has been struck by how little difference awards attention can make. Having the phrase Oscar nominee or Oscar winner after an actor's name, or even a behind-the-camera person, doesn't open the door for marginalized communities the way we would like it to, she says. Yeah, maybe somebody unlocked locked it, but it's not open wide for folks to just come in at their will. Both before and after her Oscar win, Barry has had to be her own advocate. I still have to go fight and convince people to make a way out of no way, to convince people to put a woman of color in a role that wasn't written for a woman of color. Several winning performances by black actresses have been decried for perpetuating old stereotypes. Among the multiple stereotypes of black women portrayed in American cinema, the most well-known ones are probably the Jezebel, an innately promiscuous and predatory woman who cannot not control her pulses, the sapphire, the sassy and neck-rolling angry black woman, and the mammy, the archetypal black female stereotype in Hollywood, famously played by Hattie McDaniel herself. While these performances were convincing and powerful, they all insert themselves into a narrative of black pain that is all too often seen in American cinema. But what is potentially the most problematic aspect of black actresses' relationship with the Oscars is that winning, in many cases, has not always benefited their careers in Hollywood. This phenomenon of career stagnation or decline after an Oscar nomination or win is known as the Oscar curse. And while it has happened to multiple performers over the years, black actresses are especially prone to fall victim to it. After Hattie McDaniel made history by being the first African-American woman to win an Oscar, she spent the rest of her career not just being ignored by the Academy, but essentially reprising her mammy role, playing the maid over and over again across different mediums. She gave voice to the radio show, Beulah, and before falling ill with breast cancer, filled the same role on its TV adaptation. There was little room for professional ambition, as the roles available to black women at the time were severely limited. In the years that followed her success with Carmen Jones, Dorothy Dandridge had trouble finding film roles that suited her talents. She wanted strong leading roles but found her opportunities limited because of her race. Her life and career were racked by divorce, personal bankruptcy, and the absence of offers of work. At age 42, she was found dead in her West Hollywood apartment, either a suicide or a victim of an accident overdose. Decades later, black women have more opportunities, but similar struggles remain. In any case, it is not just female actresses who have fallen victim to the shady underbelly of Hollywood. For starters, we have comedian Cat Williams who doubled down on how his industry peer, Jamie Foxx, might have given up his dignity for an award, but that's only half of what he said about the actor. About a decade ago, when Cat Williams was doing a show in Los Angeles, he said something to the audience. He told them that Jamie Foxx might be gay. The comedian straight up said, 
said, who's gay? Jamie Foxx. He even gave a name saying, I can even tell you the name of the guy he messed around with. His name is Marcus Anthony. He's the only guy signed to Jamie Foxx's label. I know all the comedians and actors' secrets. Who's gay? Jamie Foxx. Then the comedian kept going and said a lot of negative things about Fox. He used strong language and said, forget Jamie Fox and the money he got from Django Unchained. He also said, they gave me the script and I said, any guy who does this should die. And the next thing I knew, Jamie Fox was getting ready for the movie. Now the comedian is making more accusations about Fox. He's saying that Fox gave up something important to win an Oscar. Honestly, Fox's journey to success has had many bad moments and these made Cat think he really did give up something important. Fox is a person with lots of talents. He started by doing funny skits, and then he became an actor who won an Oscar. However, it seems the situation might have been a little deeper than how Williams painted it out to be. According to reports, Fox didn't initially take his Oscar nomination seriously because, just as you'd expect of a rookie in the industry, he believed there was no way he'd win it over the greats he was nominated with. But it turns out the decision makers of the industry had it all planned out since the beginning. What, what happened was is that I didn't have a click. I didn't have a crew in LA, and everybody had a click. Uh, the Wayne had a crew, it was like 9,000 of them, and it was all these other. When I was up for the Oscar, I didn't really think it was a big deal, Fox explained. I thought there's no way I'm going to win that thing. I saw Oscar time as a reason to have fun. I was like, oh, I'm nominated? Let's celebrate with champagne and party. I remember having those photo taking people following me for the first time. I went a bit crazy. At the Golden Globes, I had some champagne and I acted pretty silly on the red carpet. Looking back, I realized I wasn't respectful to the whole thing. Fox talked about going to the show with a friend and being nominated for many awards that year. On the red carpet, he and his friend were shouting about how many awards they were up for that night in a way that seemed immature, he said. His publicist called him and scolded him for his behavior, saying, what are you doing? Can't you see how embarrassing this is? You have a chance, but you need to act a certain way. It turns out that it might have just been a way for these elites to prepare him for what was to come, as Fox seemed to have reached a major crossroads in his career, where he was seemingly going to get inducted into the upper ranks. And then I get a call. And on the other end of the phone says, hi, Jamie Foxx. So who's this? This is Oprah. The first person to intervene and seemingly get Fox on track for what the elites expected was one celebrated media mogul. The television personality called Fox and told him personally that he was blowing it. She told me, you really have a great chance to do something that is wonderful. And the character you played touched so many people. But not if you act like this, Fox said. I says, OK, you want to you want to meet who you're supposed to meet here? I said, yeah. He's right there. And it was Sydney Poy. The big boss in media seemingly had a plan. She asked Fox to come to a party at Quincy Jones's house. Fox said he got to meet a bunch of actors and actresses he admired when he was young. They all said good things about his work and congratulated him. But the boss lady brought Fox to the party so he could meet one person especially, Sydney Poitier. Standing in a tuxedo in the corner was Sydney Poitier, Fox said. I walked up to him and he said, I watched your performance and I grew two inches. I leave you with one thing, responsibility. From that point on, Jamie continued to land all the major awards and became significantly more successful. The moment he started to have a change of heart, he became the subject of sexual misconduct investigation. And when he managed to scale through that, he landed in the hospital. Tells you that there's almost no one these can't get to. And just like in Fox's case, these industry elites also tried to ruin a couple of other actors who wanted to turn their backs on them, and one of those was Cuba Gooding. Gooding's story is a bit different from what we're used to seeing with famous people. The big shots in Hollywood not only made him lose popularity, but also messed up his life beyond the glamorous world. But it's not just them. He also had a part in his own downfall. Around the late 1990s and early 2000s, Cuba Gooding was a big deal in Hollywood. He got attention from being on TV shows like Hill Street Blues, and MacGyver. Then he landed a major movie role in John Singleton's first movie, Boys in the Hood, which became really famous. After that, his career got even better. He acted in other good movies like Rob Reiner's version of Aaron Sorkin's A Few Good Men and the thriller Outbreak. But let's focus on the elephant in the room. One main reason Cuba Gooding Jr. isn't getting roles anymore is because many women say he did some bad things. But here's the deal. Although Gooding himself also did some not-so-great stuff, people are saying that part of the reason he's in this situation is that he was planning to expose some secrets about people in Hollywood. But in Gooding's case, it got him into a lot of trouble. And it was, it was horrifying. It was horrifying because you, your words 
are not your words, they're someone else's, and then that becomes the headline, whether it's true or not. It all began in June 2019 when USA Today said that they were looking into Gooding for touching a woman inappropriately at a bar in New York City while he was drunk. After that, Gooding went to the police himself and got arrested. You might say this was when things started to go badly for the actor. He was on a good path, but suddenly it all turned around, and things got even worse later that year when something even more terrible happened. Back when this was in the news, people were talking about it a lot. They were saying that the reason things were going so wrong for Gooding was because he might have been about to reveal some horrible stuff happening in Hollywood. But how would he even know about that? Here's the deal. Even though Gooding lost everything eventually, he was doing pretty well before all this happened. You must have felt like you'd lost everything, right? Yeah, well, it's what, more than that, it was like... Besides acting in several successful movies that made a lot of money, Gooding also won an Oscar. Getting that award meant he could ask for a lot more money for his roles, and he could also choose whichever movie movies he wanted to be in. He became one of the top people in Hollywood, and he enjoyed that success. So, it adds up that being part of the most special group in Hollywood gave him access to lots of people and let him see things that happen behind the scenes. It seems like he might have found out more than he could handle. While he wanted to shine a light on what was happening in the industry, the powerful people seemed to have stopped him in his tracks. But it's possible that Gooding also made some bad choices that helped the important folks cancel him. It's just one of those aspects of being someone in the spotlight. You can't stand on stage with an award over your head and accept that, but not accept this. It seems he wanted to expose them because they pretty much ruined his career. Gooding himself talked about it and thinks the industry was trying to hurt him. He says that some white actors who did worse things than him got away with it and are still doing well. He also said the only reason his situation was different was because he didn't let them control him. After a bit, another woman accused Gooding, and then Page Six said three more women came forward saying he did some horrible things. In a recent turn of events, it seems that even Hollywood elite have found themselves dealing with John Cena. According to fans, Cena purportedly underwent a humiliating ritual during his appearance at the Oscars, where he was notably seen on stage without clothes. One fan commented, No surprise that John Cena is walking on stage at the Oscars during primetime TV that children are most likely watching. This is not just a humiliation ritual. The Hollywood perverts are certainly getting off on this. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.